and welcome to the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of February 5th. I'm Katherine Aleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. For a weekly episode to talk about parenting in a roundabout way, along with a little pop culture. So we're going to have the final word... <laughs> On oh, the... please, please let it be the final <laughs> word. Don't let this be a curse. On the musical rooms at Casa Moro. Yes. As you may recall, in our last installment of Terry's having work done on our house, we were waiting for a shower door. My daughter had pretty much moved into the downstairs apartment, but there was the shower door was taking a long time to come in. So finally... He, the the uh, handyman came, he put on the shower door, he said, wait a day or two before you use it just to make sure everything's dried, but, but it's good to go. Yay! So we waited two days just to be super safe. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter took a shower. She enjoyed the flow from the shower head. The shower felt great. She really liked it. I had said that I would sit downstairs with her while she was taking a shower just in case there was a problem. But no, there's no problem until she got out and she realized there was water all over the floor. Oh, no. Her bath mat was soaked and there was puddles and it was running into this little closet next to the shower, which already <gasps> has mold problems. So, oh no. oh, no. And so I'm like, I tried to s figure out if it was coming from under the shower door, which would be easy to to fix, or right. if it was seeping through the wall, which would be a nightmare. So yeah. it looked to me like it was going through from the side of the shower through the little wall between the, the shower and the closet and out through like kind of the door jam of the closet that's what mm. it seemed to me. But I said, tomorrow, when you take take another shower tomorrow, and I'm going to be in the bathroom, and I'm going to look, and I'm going to see where this water is coming from before I call the handyman and say, fix this! Right. <laughs> so um, I looked, and sure enough, the first glimmer of water I saw was coming from this door jam of the, of the closet. It was just started seeping out. And uh, the first time... We'd been able to dry up all the water, and that was it. It was dry all night. But this time, after the second shower, it just kept seeping out all bleeping night. Oh, no. Every time we went into the bathroom, there were huge puddles. We would put newspapers <laughs> down, and the newspapers would be drenched. So I sent an email the next morning to the lady at the handyman place saying, we have a problem. I need somebody to come out and fix this. If it can't be our handyman, if he's busy, I need someone to come out and fix this. And so she right. emailed back. It has back to be today. <laughs> we rearrange things. Maybe he can come tomorrow. And I said, it is actively leaking right now. I yeah. need somebody ASAP. So they, they canceled our handyman's appointment with a new customer. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Yep. And he came over and he figured out what the problem was and he fixed it and he said don't use it for 24 hours but the other problem we were having because just one just flooding uh, <laughs> was that the shower head was dripping incessantly mm -hmm. could not we turned off the taps as hard as we could would not stop and then the taps were impossible for her to turn when she went to take a shower the second night so I said to him, also, we got this leak. And he said, well, that's because of the taps, and I can't fix that. You need to call a plumber. So <laughs> called a plumber. Plumber came the next day. And uh, the the plumber on the phone had said, well, you know, if they're old taps, because that, that's what the panty man had said, they're old, they're real old, the, the, the things are worn down. You know, we may not be able to replace them because they're old. We may have to, like, break open the tile and put something new in. Oh, boy. But we got this this uh, very pleasant older gentleman coming to do the plumbing. And he happened to remember from, like, 20 or 30 years ago that you can swap in this kind of handle for that kind of handle. And he had to have it in his truck, and he fixed it. And so now everything works. <laughs> she had a good shower that night. Everything seemed to work. There was no water on the floor. Please, 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 please. Don't let this be it. Please, please, please. She's got her, all her stuff down there. She's got her micro. She's microwaved stuff. She's toasted stuff. She's washed dishes. She's sat on her couch and watched the TV, and now she wants a bigger TV, but that's something. <laughs> And she wants right. a coffee table. I am so proud of myself. She's not appreciating this because she's not old like me. But I made her like a college dorm coffee table. 
She wanted mm-hmm. a coffee table. We didn't have anything, but we had all these bins of junk that we didn't know what to do with. So I put two bins together and put a towel over it. Coffee table! <laughs> da, da, da. Da. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I can't put anything on that. You can put your feet on it. Look. <laughs> she said, can I get a real one? Eventually. But look, isn't it cool? <laughs> it goes with your room. Children don't appreciate our ingenuity. Right. Children. I totally of- gone with that at her age. Right. Both storage and a coffee table, a piece of furniture. Right. It works both ways. Give me a couple of bricks and some boards, I'll build you a bookcase, kiddo. <laughs> Don't forget the milk crates. That's, That's right. always an option. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come on, this is your first apartment. You get creative. Right. right. This is what we do. Anyway, so Everybody hold good thoughts at the shower. Yes. The shower keeps working. No water anywhere. We already have probably toxic mold in that closet. Let's not build any more. Right. Um, so, yay. Yay. That's yay. great. And uh, thank you to Mr. Handyman in Wayne, New Jersey, for their prompt coming to rescue us from the unending water. Right. And, uh, Prozansky Plumbing in... in uh, Passaic, New Jersey, for giving us faucets with a minimum of drama. Right. Gotta love the old timers that are like, oh, yes. we'll just do this. It's <laughs> I know. fine. I'd gotten some young punk when we had had a whole construction project to go on. When we renovated our bathroom, <laughs> um, we had like this, we had contractor do it. And it's uh-huh. this older man and his sons work for him and Uh they do a ton of work like in our neighborhood and with older homes and and anyway we we decided and I think it might have been one of his his idea or his son whatever to reorient things like to Uh flip the toilet from one wall to the other and put the you know this because it was a weird layout um so and I remember they had the floor all open and there was some question of like, can the toilet go there? Like, is the floor, can it handle it? Whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's fine. And he just starts <laughs> jumping on the joists, like the bare joist. He's just like, this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> like, okay, if you say so. Yikes. <laughs> And it's been fine, knock on wood, for like eight years. So I think it's, I guess it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> we're done talking about home reno. Please, please, please. We hope. That's right. Yes. If something else happens, I will just cry about it to you privately. We will not <laughs> trouble the podcast listeners with it. But I am very excited. She is super psyched to be down there in her apartment. She's really liking it. That's great. She's busy thinking of other things we could buy for her. (laughs) Yes. Oh, well. TVs are good. TV is where we watch our shows. Yes, that's right. This week we watched, uh, continued our watch of Reservation Dogs with uh, season one, episode five, Come and Get Your Love, and season one, episode six, Hunting. Yes. And I mean, the second one, we'll get to the the first one, but the second one was was really about parenting and it was so moving. I mean, it it was Willie Jack and her dad hunting and you really Uh never saw any of the other other uh, friends except for Mm -hmm. in flashback, Daniel, the one who has died. Um, Yeah. And just, oh, you know, you just felt for this dad, like he's, he's so, he's grieving. And because I, I think, uh, Daniel was his nephew and, uh, oh my gosh, you know, he's trying to help his daughter. He's trying to, you know, deal with it himself. Mm -hmm. He's, oh, oh my gosh, this man. Yeah. (laughs) We can relate. Yes. Um, but then it had, yeah. you know, lots of humor, you know, they, mm-hmm. they're out hunting and they discover this trail cam. So they're like just <laughs> goofing around and dancing yes. in front of it, acting silly <laughs> for the yeah. rich white people who put it there. And yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was these two episodes were interesting because they just each focused on one member of the group mm-hmm. instead of the whole whole gang. Right. And so the I felt feel like uh, Bear and Olora got much most, most of the focus in the first uh, few episodes. Right. So it was really um, nice seeing Cheese and uh, Willie Jack get a focus. Right. Even if a little odd to just have it be one at a time. Right. Well, you know, like you said, it's the, these are little movies about yes. these people. Um, Very much. You know, you still had a little bit of advancing the mm-hmm. the plot of, you know, them raising money to leave and yeah. um, the conflict with the other group. So. Right, right. A little bit of that, but... Uh, Willie Jack seemed like, sure, she wants to leave, but then does she really? Right. So. And they had some sort of fun little, uh, you know, imaginary, <laughs> I don't know what you call them, like a flash forward or, a, yeah. a med, you know, what will you do when you leave? Um, uh-huh. And she's like, well, I could be an MMA fighter or I could be, <laughs> a, I could rescue dogs or I could be a chef. <laughs> Like so, so many she has things. solid plans for her future. Yes, yes. <laughs> and her dad was very gently like, "Well, yes. um, we have, we can do those things here, probably." <laughs> yes. So. I loved that she had brought some something to use as war paint, and he was like, "Oh, it's got all these chemicals. Don't put that on your face." Right. And the next scene, he has it on his face. He, of course, he does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it was ba- it was just makeup, you know. Yeah, it was like yeah. a little compact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's probably right about the chemicals, but still, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very cute bonding. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, but sad. There, uh, I don't think we've ever quite gotten the story about what happened to Daniel. So no, I assume by the end of the season that will be coming along. Right. They seem to be hinting more and more in it. Hopefully, he did not have a. An encounter with Dear Lady. Yeah. Well, if he did, that means he was a bad guy, so... That's true. So we shouldn't be too sad. He didn't seem like a bad guy. No. Yeah, that was... So that was the other episode with Cheese and Big. The Yeah. They're calling him a light horseman? I don't know what kind of... I think he's the tribal uh, police officer as opposed to the town. Right. Or the county sheriff or whatever. County sheriff or whatever. But yeah. I guess that's the name of it, Light Horseman. I guess. If that's the official name or if that's just something that... It's written on his car. Does. It is written on his car. So, yeah, he, as a child, encountered this dear lady, this sort of mystical, but a <laughs> violent... lady with dear, dear feet. <laughs> who can kill people, yes. like, without a... <laughs> Without a qualm, yeah. <clears throat> so she's she's mystical, but she can very much in real life, yes, kill people, yes, because we see that. Yeah, a few times there's her implied killing guys who pick her up on the side of the road and right. speed off in their sports cars, but then she also did off a couple of thieves in a uh, holding up a store, right? While young Big was in the bathroom, right. So, yeah, that was interesting. I, according to uh, Wikipedia, and I think it's, I read some reviews on Vulture, which are written by a Native American who explains it all for us ignorant oh, white folk. Um, okay. That is an actual mythical figure in various different tribal lore. Mm, okay. And uh, pretty much along the lines of what they said in the show, that, that it's bad men and to try to to guide people to be responsible for their children and not, mm. as she said, you know, have a bunch of kids all over the place and never see them. So, so she needs to go over Bear's dad. Yeah, that's right. I know how is Bear's dad dad still standing? Yeah. But uh, before you let any lady in your car, Bear's dad, look at her feet. Right. I don't. I guess he only has the one, as far as we know. I guess, but so. I don't know. But he seems like the kind of dude who would have, yeah, you know, a few more. Correct. That yeah. we're not necessarily known to, or the concern of Bear's mom. 
Right. Bear's mom is, uh, you know, concerned with Bear only, which as it should be. Yes. He needs yes. concerned people, I think. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But, so, uh, But these were fun. These are very different and uh, interesting. Well mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I read somewhere to, I think it might have been, again, Wikipedia, <laughs> that <laughs> something about how cheese r- relates well to adults or older people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you can certainly see that. You know, yes. there was the episode when they were at the clinic where he sprung the the grandma and took her outside because <laughs> she thought yeah. he was her grandson. Yes, that um, was very sweet. And this one, he has this, you know, it's a whole arc. It's a whole yeah. story with him and Big, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and somewhat, somewhat disrespectful, but he goes with it and uh, fixes his radio in the end. So <laughs> That's right. So he can listen to his tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. And it had a very awful scene with these white cops who just yes. were really yeah and big was certainly trying to put up a front for <laughs> for cheese cheese definitely yes. uh saw right through that yeah uh, and then they had various interactions with this uh what was the character's name oh was it buck bucky bucky yes played by west studi um and uh I guess he's the one making the copper figures and hanging them around town and freaking people out. Right. uh, Yeah. He's pretty quick with a story when he needs to explain Mm -hmm. himself. Yes, he is. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Just laying on the bench reading about string theory and he fell asleep. Yeah. And then we did see the string theory book. We did. (laughs) Make another appearance. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So. That. I guess was meant to tie him more, even more to the um, copper Copper. thievery. Yes. So only two more episodes for this season. Yeah, that is it. I know. Only eight for the first one. There's 10 each for the second season. Okay. It's been, it's been real interesting. It's Mm -hmm. not, you know, very much not traditional sitcom-y. No. Enjoyable. And I do appreciate a half hour show. Whether it's funny or not. Half hour is a nice amount of time for yes. an episode. Can everything be a half hour, please? <laughs> Absolutely. For those of us with with limited time and limited attention spans, mm-hmm. just tell your story 30 minutes at a time. It'll be fine. Yeah. You can do it. We believe yeah. in you. Yeah. See, it, it, it causes you to get creative, like having uh, I, the... I think the Vulture Review I read said that it was nice that they had these two episodes about single characters because in a half an hour, it's hard to develop a B story. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, back in the 70s, I have have an A, a B, and a C story. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) In 30 minutes minus commercials. Mm -hmm. Kids, back in the day, (laughs) things were snappy. That's right. But for this kind of story, Yes. That's true. Yeah. They have us. Yeah. They have a story thread. They have a certain amount of work they want to get done in each episode, and they focus on that. Right. And then they can go back and fill in other things, which is fine. Yeah. Also, a cool way to do it. Speaking of of cool things of an entertainment nature, what do we have for Catherine's Library Find of the Week? We have a fractured fairy tale. Um, I had a day recently where I just was pulling four holds, like two dozen <laughs> probably of these, you know, twists on fairy tales. Uh-huh. All, all going to the same person. I'm like, yeah. wow, you are you are into this, <laughs> or you're like a homeschooler, or yes, something. But anyway, report. Yeah, one of my favorites was called Snow White and the Seventy Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> Oh, that, De- seems, that seems excessive. <laughs> and it was by David Kali and illustrated by Raphael Barbanegra. Um, and the illustrations are amazing, you know, just really sort of funky, like mm-hmm. poppy, you know, 
clever illustrations. And yeah, as you might expect, um, Snow White encounters these 77 dwarfs and she's like, okay, great. You know, I'll, I'll be safe from the, the wicked queen here. Uh, and then quickly she's like, oh man, I have 77 names to learn. I got to watch 77, you know, minor outfits every day. I have 77 breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like she's like, this is no, I'm going to uh, take my chances with the queen. <laughs> By the end, she's like, no, please don't wake me up. I'm good. <laughs> So it was a lot of fun, I thought. Yeah. Right. And That's and just, cool. you know, side recommendation for, like, who knew that there were just, like I said, dozens of these huh. twists on fairy tales. Like, every fairy tale that you can name, there's somebody has done, you know, a, a different take on it. Obviously, mm -hmm. they're the oldest stories in the, yeah. <laughs> in the book. So. Yeah. Plenty of opportunity for Did that. Fractured fairy tales on was it Wacky Racers? It was that era? That was maybe before your time. Yeah, Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. I seem to remember that was sometimes part of some show that I watched. Mm. I did not remember watch that Wacky one. Racers? No, you don't remember that with, uh -uh. with the little dog that went shh, 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 when he was laughing. No, Dick Dastardly. No, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to look All it right. up. <laughs> Googling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was ancient. It was. It would have been in the 60s, so that's that's before your time. Yeah. But all my old ladies out there know it. <laughs> <sighs> Going out to my old ladies. Right. Of the Brittle Bone Brigade. <laughs> you all remember <laughs> Butley, don't you? <laughs> oh, wow memories that's right well that takes us right into our next segment doesn't <laughs> <you> it <laughs> all right so here we go so yeah and uh we're gonna uh take a spin through the archives to see what we were talking about one year ago two years ago and four years ago this week and indeed uh last it's two years ago is this two years ago no last year mm -hmm. we were talking about what our kids are watching and whether we approve. And my daughter is now very, very deep into General Hospital. <laughs> She's obsessed with General Hospital. She's talking about General Hospital all the time. And I used to watch General Hospital way, way back in right. the late 70s, in the Luke and Laura Ooh, time. Oh, yeah. The big time, the big controversial, uh, mm -hmm. you know, rape is the beginning of romance. Mm, great. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I remember all those characters and I'm like, are there still like Webbers on the show? Are there still uh, Spencers on the show? And she's like, well, maybe there's a Spencer, but it's like, yeah, all the characters I remember. John Stamos used to be on General Hospital. Right. She's like, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, she was a full house person, right? Yes, or, so she yeah. knows who. So he she is, knows but, who John Stamos is, but he's not on it now. So right? She's like, she's like, you come into it. It's like in the middle of a story, and I don't know what happened. How do I find out what happened? And I said, there's been things happening since you know the fifties. So. Right. So <laughs> well, maybe maybe this General Hospital started a little later, but still. Uh, but they you are. Just, you just have to jump in and roll with the tide. And they are very good at yes. catching you up. Yes. So and I not just to now, if I go downstairs and she's watching, it's boy, you just pick up the rhythms of the dialogue. It's just mm -hmm. like it's exactly the same as it has always been. I used to watch soap operas with my mother on my school lunch breaks, and um, it's exactly the same as that. It's right. just always been the same. Right. So. I guess I approve of her watching it. I think it's cute. Um, better than, well, she still watches all the reality show. We have to laugh. She tapes things that look interesting to her. I don't know if she ever watches them, but they're all like, <laughs> my husband was scrolling through what we have on our DVR and it was like, um, like 10 different things with the word death in them. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all these you know every time there's some late it's either a movie or it's a reality uh you know a true crime yeah just is like i don't know if i want you approve watching those right although soap operas yeah 
get the fair share of those on the soap operas too. But it's so Maybe over the as, top. It'll, ta- it'll take five months for one plot to play out. Yeah, so. and it's so ridiculous Not two hours. that you just... <laughs> That's right. Plus which, nobody is ever truly dead on a soap opera. That's Unless right. You see that body fall directly into a coffin and go into the ground and even even then, then yeah yes it was a it was a twin right <laughs> my twin you buried i'm mm-hmm. here i remember right. somebody fell off a cruise ship and then five years later she came back as a completely different actress and uh, it's like what island were you on right. because <laughs> the plastic surgery there is remarkable <laughs> uh, so. well one of the reasons i i said i pulled this out was because now my child is watching the West Wing and <gasps> oh my gosh <laughs> so I periodically get texts like what do you mean Mrs. Landingham <laughs> died you know and then I got I feel like you, man. Oh, I think we all thought that what right. poor Toby he had such a great idea and he got <laughs> shot down or like I you know, well, did he like more... say Josh got shot at the end of the first season? <laughs> I didn't care about Josh. No, but he did the the uh, Zoe kidnapping. He's like, I was oh. about to go to bed, and then Zoe oh. got kidnapped. So then I had to watch like three more episodes <laughs> to make sure she was okay. <laughs> yes. So it's, yes, it's yeah. quite entertaining to me that he that is adorable is doing this and. I wish. He's also um, listening to the podcast that we listen to, nice. the West Wing Weekly. Good. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he's he's doing doing it all, just like we so, did. Melissa Fitzgerald and Mary McCormick have a book coming out that's like backstage at the West Wing. Oh. So he should keep an eye out for that. Yeah. we would probably enjoy it. Also, mm. it was hilarious uh, on Twitter over the weekend – uh, it, when the the Chiefs got into the Super Bowl, and then there was a lot of people saying Taylor Swift is go, has concerts in uh, Asia, and then sh- is she going to be able to come back for the Super Bowl? Is the t- will the timing work out? And they somebody found that clip of them trying to figure out time zones on the West Coast. Oh, yes. The president was going to leave. Was going to get. To Washington, like an hour before he left. Right. And so everybody's like, the West Wing already figured it this out, everybody. She can make it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, he was just the other day was watching, and you know, as he's watching, sometimes if I'm nearby, I'll of course watch some too. And there was the one where they were on their way back from Asia and they were arguing about what time, you know, with the press. Mm-hmm. Core and um, and CJ were arguing about like what day it was and what time it was, and uh-huh. so it was it was fun. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm enjoying so nice. that he is enjoying it. I'm not even sure what prompted him to watch this. As you know, his taste. <laughs> <laughs> TV, <laughs> Madam Secretary, NCIS. Uh, well, it actually does fit very well with Madam Secretary. Yes, and he'll he'll be like, oh, that person who plays so and so was on was on Madam Secretary, or when whenever Mark Harmon appeared on The West Wing, he's oh, like, yeah. Leroy Jethro Gibbs is. On- <laughs> on the I saw West something Wing? the other day that said that that part. This thing on the West Wing is what got him the role on NCIS. Yeah. I don't know if that's and that's true why or not, he had to quickly peace to, out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was so also, sad. CJ can't be happy. She has no. to be Danny. Yeah, exactly. So that's happening over here. So, and we, before that, we talked about, a year before that, we talked about how kids change their parents. So I don't know if, if he's changed me or, oh. you know, would I decide to watch Madam Secretary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have anything new to say on that since the last time. I mean, I think that having my kids turned me into an obnoxious advocate giving the schools what for, which I don't know if I would have been like that. I might have been still. But uh, um, now, I don't know. I'm trying to be more cool. <laughs> cool. Just every day I have the urge to call their bosses at their work and say, now what's going on with this? Right. But I don't. Yeah. I don't. Progress. I Very don't even good. do it. If they call to like make a schedule change or something, I don't even say, well, 
why so while, you yeah, fall. while you're here, <laughs> <laughs> let me just quick ask a few things. It won't take more than an hour. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tempted. It's so hard not to do it. <laughs> oh boy! They're lucky I don't have their email addresses. So, but the, uh, the bosses, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd have to be phone, and I. Just, but uh, I don't know. Has uh, has your kids going to college changed you in any way? Hmm. Lowered your blood pressure. Uh, <laughs> It may have lowered allowed my you to pick up new hobbies. <laughs> well, a new job, right? <laughs> I did take that's on the, right. Well, that's a change. I did take on the job because the kid was leaving, so <laughs> he now he has to stay gone. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> but it you was say a, that with love. Yeah. Well, it was a combination of him leaving and him getting his driver's license, uh, um, so that he can take himself places, yeah. um, because. My schedule was his schedule for quite right. some time. Right. So that has different. changed yeah. since we last recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, but it does seem like if, you know, the change is that having kids or your particular kids is it's going to prompt are going to happen mm sort of earlier in their life, right? Like right. um yeah. once they've had their effect, <laughs> you're <laughs> stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. I am trying though to change to be less micromanagey. Right. Now that they're older and I mean I'm I'm doing less driving of kids around and mm-hmm. that's nice because my daughter does a lot of it. Right. And I'm, you know, not trying to not just go down and tell her where to put everything in her new apartment. Let her just do it herself. Mm-hmm. Let her ask for things when she wants them. So we'll see how long that lasts. Right. But uh, it just, it's nice to have us not be so on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And seeing and observing and commenting on everything Going both ways, you know. I would like to kiss my husband without somebody going, "Oh, break it right. up." <laughs> um, so hopefully, this one should, and certainly she would like to be able to eat a cookie without somebody going, "You eating a cookie? You think you should have that cookie? How many cookies have you had?" Right. So, uh, although I had to laugh, I went down to her apartment. She has a our treadmill is in her living room, and there's no other place for it, so it's going to stay there. So I'm doing the treadmill, and I could see into her kitchen. And I could see the shelf above her sink, and there's a box of Ritz crackers. And I said to her, are you imagining that your mother will not come down here and eat your Ritz crackers? <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't changed that much. Right. Snacks? There are snacks in the house? <laughs> I will always know when there are snacks in the right. house. Even if I have to. Enter an apartment, which is somebody else's private domain. <laughs> the Ritz call, and they call loud. Dear yes. Dear. Come and get your Ritz. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. So, I don't know. I meant, how many points do you get for that? Right. For, for... Do you get points for, of you know, for not taking the Ritz or do you get points for? <laughs> I think I should get points for sniffing them out. Right. I didn't have to open a closet or anything. They were right there. You could see them. She will learn. Yeah. <laughs> find hiding places if That's she right. values her Ritz. But Ritz. Yum. The Ritzes. Mm. So we talked about how TV quiz shows and competition shows could be improved with the parenting theme. Right. And this seems so obvious to me. And we've talked about it, I think, more than once. We've put the ideas out there. That's right. Any number of times. Yep. And nobody has bit. But how good would these be? You know? Oh, like absolutely. We imagined... Uh, so here are the graphics we had on the old one because they will be showing up in your Twitter feed if you follow us because I thought they were so funny. I used them all. The Amazing Race, but you have five kids. You have to get to widely different places. Right. Who would not watch that? <laughs> the Amazing Race, parenting edition. That's right. Jeopardy, but with your kids' homework. <laughs> Elementary school math for 300. Um, supermarket sweep, but you have a crying baby or a toddler who has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And if you, this is for special need moms out there, if you were in a desert island with your IEP team and had to make bargains for food and survival, how would that go? 
how long would it be before you voted them off the island? So immediately. <laughs> right. Possibly with extreme prejudice. <laughs> Now, from our from our older parenting point of view, there's, there's the 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 college bowl. Do they still have those? Do they still have the quiz shows? They have Jeopardy college. Right? Yeah, yeah. They should have like parents who got their kids into various colleges. <laughs> <laughs> Get to wear there the sweatshirt go. and go on TV. Right, because you know the parents were very involved. <laughs> in that. That's right. You survived the application process. Mm-hmm. Now you can maybe win some money from That's it, right. You deserve it. Which you will need to pay for it. So. <laughs> yes. Right. That, see, that's what they need to do is have a quiz show with, with for which the prize is four years, all expenses paid. Right. <laughs> and uh, there would be know. there would be stiff competition <laughs> to get on that, I would say. Yeah, it could be one of those like a full season competition show, you know, where you have mm-hmm. to uh, – have to overcome all sorts of challenges, which will be, you know, puny compared to dragging your kid's butt across the high school and getting yeah. them into college. Uh, <sighs> you know, getting across a continent on a taxi cab would be nothing compared to that. <laughs> that's right. But, uh, you know. Depending on the child, of course. <clears throat> that's true. They should, they should, uh, they should consider parenting mm-hmm. themes when they're doing it's just all all these competition things are just all young people you know all good looking young people well and and when they do have kids they're always like oh i miss my kids so much i wish they were here like okay like if you really miss them (laughs) we'll get them over here (laughs) yeah yeah it's gonna change the dynamic a little bit (laughs) oh dear yeah I have to think sometimes moms might want to just stay on the aisle and that's <laughs> I have yep. to go home. No, no, don't think no, so. No. I'll just hang over here. I'll just I, I think the I'll goal the would <laughs> Well I mean I feel like on most of these they make the people stay around. They just like put them in a hotel somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, after they oh, get nice. booted because they can't oh, be well, going get booted home. booted right away and exactly. just enjoy the hotel. What is the motivation to stick <laughs> around? Like, no, please. I'll just hang out by the pool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Call me when it's the final episode and we have to interview me for something. But right. until then. Exactly. Gee. Until then, I'm good right yes. here. So. <laughs> I wonder if, like, for some of these cooking shows, do they ever do anything like cooking to feed a family? It's all like restaurant dishes and stuff, right? I mean, some of like the baking shows are people who do cook for their families, but yeah, I need like the contest to be this one is allergic to this thing, that right. one will not eat this thing for nothing, right. and this one, you know. Thinks it's terrible if you adapt things for these other considerations. So right. You have to basically make three versions of the same dish. Right. In a way that you can get done in half an hour. Mm-hmm. Go. I mean, that is, that's just a, the the challenge level is high. Yes. Very, Thanksgiving very high. Thanksgiving dinner. Here's your guest list. Mm-hmm. We did do that once. It was, it was like... A couple of adults that were eating low carb, a couple uh-huh. that were vegan, oh, yes. one who was a type one diabetic, a couple of uh-huh. you know a preschooler. Like it was seriously over would that not the be top. A great <laughs> Food Network competition show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Get on it, you guys! Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that these these chefs or you know the people who run these things are just like. Well, my kids eat whatever I give them, you know, like they don't understand that they, that their kids are different. They would have to, they would have to find some chef who's a mom and had some experience with more difficult situations. Right. To like coach. Um, But I don't know. I'd watch that show. Yeah. But we're happy you're at least listening to this podcast. 
That's right. And we'll say that's it for the Parenting Roundabout Weekly Roundup. We'll let you off the island. Enjoy your hotel stay. <laughs> Enjoy your hotel stay. Um, next, we have the final two uh, episodes of Reservation yeah. Dogs Season 1. They are called California Dreamin' and Saturday, that spelled with a V instead of a U. I don't know what that's about. For TV, maybe? M- maybe. Or not. Probably not. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll find out. Maybe we won't. <laughs> um, you can find all our episodes that have very straightforward titles on mm-hmm. Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. If anything's misspelled, it's an accident. Right. You can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, on Instagram, or Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And please visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash mamatude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about over the years. We will see you back here next Tuesday. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Bye, everyone. Bye.